I'm there to do a job, and that job is to play drums for Lamb of God. I'm an emotional drummer. I play really hard. A drumio after hours <laughs> with Art Cruz. <laughs> Dude, you're an animal. <laughs> oh, man. That's how's fun. It, how's it going, man? Oh, we're live. We're live. I can't hear myself. The people, oh, there I am. The there people I am. are watching. It's because you're, you're yelling at me. I'm yelling. Sorry. <laughs> that was great. Oh, thank you. Dude, welcome here. To all of you out there watching, please welcome Art Cruz from thank Lamb you. of God to oh. Drumeo. This has been a long time coming, and uh, this has been a great, uh, great week so far. Oh, man. So I'm, I'm actually... Having the best time of my life. This has been such a it. fun experience. Because uh, you're hanging out with me. <laughs> <laughs> or not. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> it's great. It's actually great. Everybody here, uh, the guys behind the uh, cameras, the guys behind the photography, the lights, the sounds, that's why we're here too. So love it. It's great. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, you joined Lamb of God in 2018. Yes, sir. Or officially 2019. Officially 2019. I started in 2018. And uh, you played on the self-titled 2020 record and the newest record, Omens. Yes, sir. Uh, from 2022. And uh, yeah, man, you're a monster player. Oh, thank you. And I, you oh, guys have been touring like crazy in the last uh, last few years. Oh, I guess 
as soon post-pandemic. as pandemic <laughs> post pandemic we've been like nonstop the entire time like yeah. there's been a couple breaks but one of those breaks was to write the omens album yeah so was it really a break no uh <laughs> and this this year doesn't seem like it's going to be too much different which is great and i'm super yeah. grateful so really nice. happy it's awesome. Also, we do this kind of thing inside of Drumeo all the time, and specific to this lesson or this feature, um, we've got all the tracks that uh, Art's going to be playing in this session. They're all going to be transcribed over on Drumeo with the drumless track. So you can go learn these for yourself uh, and a bunch of other Lamb of God stuff too. Uh, so check that out, drumeo.com forward slash trial, and you can try all that stuff out. Art, you also broke a ton of stuff in the last two days, so we've got lots of giveaways, which is great. Uh, I think this symbol uh, lasted, it was brand new, it lasted like four hits. Uh, four hits and a sound check. Yeah. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a passionate, passionate player, so uh, forgive me, but I don't, I guess I don't always break stuff this often. <laughs> yeah, we, we got uh, an Oriental Trash Splash, an A Custom EFX Crash, we've got... Uh, Two of the three drum heads that you busted so far. Yeah. So those are uh, on the docket. We've got, um, we're going to be doing some card tricks. So we've yeah. got some signed uh, Jokers. Yeah. Um, we got some copies of the new record. Yeah. Uh, Omens. So to win all of this stuff, this is going to be posted uh, on Drumeo over the next number of months and weeks. So if you're watching on YouTube, there's a link down below once this is posted where you can enter to win this stuff and it's going to be uploaded uh, over the next little while. And then for all the Drumeo members watching, there's going to be a special link for you once this is posted inside the members area. Uh, and we're going to have something special for you guys uh, where just the members can register to uh, win that stuff. Let's get into it, man. Uh, we're talking about what does it take to play drums with <laughs> Lamb of God. But I think before we jump into anything, I yeah. want to see one of these card tricks. Really? That uh, It's on. I've been waiting all week. You guys got to see this. So, if you haven't seen it. I haven't uh, seen anything. I don't know which, uh, <laughs> this is a new Drumeo special. This is a first ever. Uh, so. a, a Drumeo After Hours <laughs> with Art Cruz. <laughs> this is really why we brought uh, you here. I love it, <laughs> jerk. <laughs> which, uh, which is the best camera to look at? Let's do, uh, let's do Jesus' cam here. Jesus! This is one card here. Jesus sees it, he's zooming in as I speak magically, and then he's magically going to zoom out as I do this. Right? Perfect. Yeah. Here's the queen of hearts in queen your hearts. hands, and you're going to hold it like this. Okay. You play drums? I do. That's why you're messing up. Right, here we go. <laughs> I know. The queen is in your hand right now, the yes. queen of hearts. This is the queen of diamonds, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> queen of diamonds, queen of hearts. Show them the queen of hearts really quick. Right there. Good? All right, put it back. All right. Now you can't look anymore. Okay. I'm going to take the diamonds. I'm going to make sure I grip this. <laughs> I'm going to so give you the diamonds. Now you're going to hold the diamonds really tight. Okay. Now without looking. Hearts, diamonds, without looking. Yeah. What do you have without looking? I have diamonds. And then on top should be the hearts. Yeah. Quick, turn them over both. both? Show the camera. The diamonds is on the Turn bottom. them over, it doesn't matter. Dude, what? <laughs> <laughs> I like that reaction all around. I like the reaction all around. What I want to know what they're dude. saying in the comments. Yeah, let's see. Uh, <laughs> do people <laughs> believe this? I, the chat's a bit delayed. What better way to would there be to interact with uh, an audience than magic tricks with the host? <laughs> Boom. There we go. Dude, this is insane. <laughs> there you go. There's I was, the one I trick. was even holding that so tight. Oh, yeah. But Too you still, uh, still got me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's actually the first time he's seen any magic from this Unreal. entire last three days. So. Unreal. Yeah. We're going to do, I'm going to make you do one more trick later on. I will. And I also don't know what it is, so. No. We're going to come back to it's this. It's going to be great. But uh, let's jump in. Let's do another Lamb of God song. Let's do it. Uh, what do we got queued up? I think we got... Uh, uh, Resurrection Man. Resurrection Man. So what's crazy about the topic of the episode, if you will, this live stream, what does it take to be the drummer and Lamb of God? Yeah. It takes a lot more than just knowing how to play the parts. Uh, and I think a lot of that had to, had to deal with a lot of uh, growth as a human being. That was part number one that I had to recognize. And then not overthinking my playing. Yeah. I admired the band for so many years uh, before I even was given the opportunity. So for us to get into this and show you kind of a little transition, we opened with Ruin, which is one of my old favorite songs. Yeah. A lot of crazy footwork uh, that I've been doing since I was a young uh, teenager trying to, trying to uh, apply that. But for this next song, it kind of has the same technique. Uh, but this is the song called Resurrection Man, which is on my first recording 
my first album with the band. Yeah. And this was an, actually an experimental song that came from nothing. Uh, we were given a click track, a tempo by our producer, and he's like, we need something like this. And we, this is pretty much what we came up with, and uh, that's Resurrection Man. So nice. you can see the contrast of the styles kind of blending and being the same and different all at once. Kind of rambling now. Let's just play the song. That's wild. <laughs> <laughs> Broke a stick. Well, actually, I didn't even break a stick. I was showboating. 
Hey, it was worth a shot. Oh, Showbone drop. Because if you would have caught it, it would have been impressive. I like that it wasn't impressive. <laughs> Some people in the chat were like, um, you got to take the chance. Sometimes take it works, chance. sometimes it doesn't. And uh, it's funny because Lamb of God's a band, and this is interesting, Lamb of God's a band that doesn't play to a click track live. Yeah. It's been, since I played that song, and no excuse, this is super fun, but I haven't played this song to a click since I recorded it. <laughs> and, I, I, and you heard me, it was like, what's the count? And I'm the click, oh, there's no click. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to jam, and I had so much fun with that right That's now. That great. was a lot of fun. Nice, man. <laughs> super fun. How did you end up getting the gig with Lamb of God? So um, I've been friends with the band for a number of years before the phone call, if yeah. you will. And uh, I toured in a band called Winds of Plague. That was my first band. Uh, we did a Lamb of God tour in 2010, mm. uh, the Rockstar Mayhem Festival. Yeah. Rest in peace, it's not around anymore. Um, it was a big, super big tour package. Lamb of God, Korn, uh, Five Finger Death Punch, Hatebreed, Chimera, nice. it was stacked. And this was one of those tours. Uh, I'd always known that I was a, f a fan of the band but at this point, this is where I kind of rekindled my relationship with them on a more personal level. Uh, I was good at hanging out. I was yeah. good at making friends <laughs> in every pocket of, of uh, the world. And if it was music or bands or a club or anything, yeah. you name it, I was just trying to make friends everywhere. So these were guys that I became really close with. And uh, little did I know that that relationship that I, that bond that we created on that tour would uh, give me a phone call yeah. about eight years later, and it did. And they knew I was pretty good at drums. I was staying busy. I was playing in a band called Prong, and uh, they're friends first before yeah. uh, work. They're family to me, you know what I mean? And that's what it was. The phone call was a family member calling another family member for some help to, to do a tour. And that's pretty much how it started. I was filling in for the band in 2018, and then it just translated to, let's just do it. Yeah. And it worked out and I'm here and I'm super honored and blessed and lucky and thankful to be here yeah. in that position. So Dude, it that, happened really fast. That's a whole lesson in itself of like, when you met those guys, like you're probably not thinking, oh, eight years from now, I'm gonna be on stage with them or in the studio. No chance. But because of how you treated them and probably they treated you, mm -hmm. uh, the fact that it happened, it all stems back to that eight years ago. Yeah, so. yeah, and, and I, if there's a lesson in anything is to, everybody always asks me like, how do I make it yeah. in the music industry? And obviously, yeah, practice is important and uh, learning your craft, honing in your craft, but think your personality and being somebody that you can actually hang out with and go to lunch with is probably yeah. <laughs> a little bit more important. It kind of goes hand in hand. Yeah. So um, yeah, huge, huge deal. I'm just super thankful. You've done two records, so what has that been like? Um, obviously, there's a bunch of records before you joined. Yeah. And so there's probably a chemistry with those guys. So what was that like coming into a studio environment, and now you're the guy recording the parts? You ever walk in, I don't know if anybody goes to college, and you're the, or even in school, and you were the new kid at school, Yeah. and you have to go up in front of the class and introduce yourself, and there's a feeling <laughs> yeah. that you get in your stomach that's absolutely scary. Mm -hmm. That's the feeling like, <laughs> that it was for me going into the studio. Yeah. And that's not, that's even going into writing process, but even with those friendships, you know, with a band like Lamb, it's, it's, they're so amazing at what they've created that you have no choice but to watch and listen. And something that I had to learn was to just pretty much shut up and listen <laughs> and watch how these guys worked. Yeah. Uh, and not go in and try and be like, okay, this is what I'm going to do because this is how I play it. And it's just, that's not my. That's my. Not my choice to make. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm there to do a job, and that job is to play drums for Lamb of God. It's yeah. not my baby. You know what I mean. I'm just thankful to be able to be in that position. So, learning their their operating skills and how they uh, how they work together and their style of writing, uh, I had to learn on that first record, and it was it was scary. Uh, and I kind of with some of the drum parts, I really kept that traditional Lamb of God sound. Because to me, it starts with the riffs. It starts with the guitar work. Yeah. You almost have to play the drums the way that they were played on the other records because of the way the riffs are written. Yeah. It almost doesn't work any other way. Yeah. Uh, so that's a beautiful thing. And I did that with the first album. Uh, 
And like Resurrection Man was a perfect example of, it's kind of meat and potatoes, but um, with mo- most of the other songs, I was not able to quite spread my wings mm. too much on that record. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to talk a bit more about that and like your style and how that's kind of changed the mm-hmm. sound and feel of the band. But uh, let's do one more off of uh, the self-titled record. Uh, yeah. This is New Colossal Hate. New Colossal Hate. This one's a, this is actually one of my favorite songs because uh, this was a song that Will, Willie had wrote ahead of the game and I, I had a, a structure of already what he was feeling. Yeah. And sometimes when a songwriter has that, that down, they want it to be played a certain way. This was one of those songs where it was like, what if I did this instead? Just kind of like gradually, hey. Yeah, push the boundary a little bit. A little bit, bit <laughs> you know, but uh, it ended up working out in uh, the whole, the whole, in my favor and the band's favor and the song yeah. ended up being really good. Let's do it. All right.
<laughs> Dude, I feel guilty just sitting over here and when you're doing that. <laughs> oh, man. So sick. I constantly get hair, uh, hair in my mouth, too, the whole time. It's all, it always happens. <laughs> oh, that's great. Dude, I love the, uh, the bell part. Yeah. In that, in that kind of hook section. It's funny because that particular part is a signature Lamb of God thing. Yeah. Which, in my eyes, originated like a Vinnie Paul thing. Yeah. The stiff arm, that stiff arm with, with no uh, <laughs> sense of dynamics. Yeah. Just, ah! <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny, but. Um, Gives it like this frantic, like relentless kind of feel. Oh! Yeah. Is it going to make it? <laughs> it's kind of funny, but yeah, I love that part. Um, it's kind of paying homage to the original sound. Yeah. And some of the footwork that goes above that was a little bit of my thing. I love doing yeah. uh, notes of four mm -hmm. with my heel toe thing. It's 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 like yeah four notes. It's like that's like my comfortable position is four notes. Yeah, don't make me do five because I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so when I think of Lamb of God and like the old records and all that kind of stuff. Um, like there's lots of those kind of like triplet riffs we were mm -hmm. talking about earlier this week. Um, I noticed like a lot of those kind of bursts on the kick of like uh, short groupings of notes. So yeah. when you came into the band, um, how did your, like you mentioned the heel toe thing that you're doing. Yeah. Um, how did your playing affect the sound of the band? Like how did that change the sound of the band on the new records? Yeah, I think a, a noticeable and this is just, uh, I mean, I'm kind of just me hearing it on my own, but just from word, words that I've had with other drummers, other musicians, other people in bands, I think the records kind of breathe a little bit more. Mm. Um, but in the early 2000s, that locked in dynamite, like precision was, yeah. was in, you know, the, the, thing, yeah. the, the lamb, the fear factories, and the footwork and everything was extremely tight. Yeah. And... I think where I had to kind of come in and and my influence is kind of something that we talked about in the uh, the drum the drum room or the the drum, the drum department live was my influences originally were not metal. Yeah. So it was like Santana, Santana, and Tower of Power, Rage Against the Machine, like to name wild. a few, Dream like, Theater. Yeah, but yeah. it's like what happens with that is I'm I'm built from a different tree, man. Like I, I have I throw some spice. You know, that Mexican-American yeah. Chicano flavor that I bring that's very, it's just more emotional. I'm an mm -hmm. emotional drummer. I play really hard. Uh, I have a lot of dynamics as much as I can. Uh, a lot of the old Lamb songs, there, there's not a lot of room for dynamics the way that they were written, but the way that I play them now, yeah. uh, I feel like I just breathe a different sort of, um, a, a different sort of, uh, life into them a little bit, you know? Yeah. They weren't missing anything, that's for sure, but uh, yeah. they are definitely, I think they just kind of have a little bit more flow. Love it. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the heel-toe thing. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about that? Of course, of course. That's my heel-toe. All right, next subject. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, <laughs> that's something that I've been doing, because there is, we're in a modern, modern drummer society that has this heel-toe technique that I have no idea how to do. Like, it is... <laughs> You guys are mental. There's crazy technique stuff uh, out there now. Th there's a lot of the, the swivel and the, 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 the type of heel toe uh, that is out there today. But something that I find that works for me is my version of it. That's important to me when I play. I like to hit hard. I like power. So a lot of my technique includes a lot of power. Mm. Um, I do use triggers to kind of enhance the, 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 the notes and stuff like that. But yeah. it's not... I really have a lot of a lot of uh, umph behind it, if you will. Yeah. So uh, something that I do with my heel toe, and I've talked about this a few times, is I really focus on driving, not just with my ankle, which is a lot of the techniques nowadays are used with just the ankle, the movement of the ankle going up and down uh, like this. I'm driving with my entire leg. Gotcha. Like uh, if, I'm not sure if the camera's looking on my, on my heel right now. Yeah. Uh, I'm picking up, I'm technically picking up my entire foot and I'm driving, driving into the kick drum and then following up with another drive. So it's, it's just really fast. And the slower I do it, the more power I can practice. The, the slower I do it, the more practice I get to get the power. But yeah. um, 
my foot my foot is coming off the entire pedal. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's very much a, a breathing exercise for me too. I breathe a lot when I'm hitting into it because I breathe into the heel and then I breathe out mm. almost. I don't breathe that fast when I'm playing fast though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's uh, that's kind of like a technique that's helped me. But like I said, I never go more than I can. I can't do more than four notes realistically. Yeah. Like I don't try. At the most, I can try five, but uh, at what point is it just for the sake of doing it's, more? It's a, like? it, yeah, and it, honestly, it saves me a lot of, uh, it kind of boosts my stamina when I use that technique mm. rather than using my legs, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Nice, man. Let's do another card trick. Gosh! Then, All right. And then we'll play another track. <laughs> Let's play another card trick, and then we'll do another drum song. <laughs> yeah. Let's be real. People are here for the magic. They're People not here, are here for, the, for drums. the magic. That's what I'm talking All about. All right, what's going on? He's going to take a card. Freely. I'm not okay. going to see it. Go ahead. Do I get to look at it? Or yeah, no? you see it. Okay. Show the camera. It's fun. Cool. All right. And now you're going to say stop as I run my thumb down like this. You're going to say stop. Stop. Preferably when my thumb is rolling down. <laughs> Some drummer stuff going on here, guys. Yeah, Ready? Stop. Perfect. He's on. Put your card there. Oh, okay. God, he's so, he's nervous. He's shaking. <laughs> I'm like really <laughs> nervous about this. Here's part one. I don't get the card right. Part right. two. I changed the card to your card. Dude, what is this? This is witchcraft. <laughs> Brujeria. <laughs> and what's crazy is this entire deck here, we're looking at this camera, right? Yeah. All right. You see all the faces, and then you see all the backs. But if you look really closely, you can blow all the colors off <laughs> and then bring them right back. This is and we'll be up. back after these messages. This is messed up. <laughs> so did you do that because the next song is called Vanishing? And you're, oh! trying, to, you're trying to make all of these... Uh, <laughs> everything what? disappear? Oh, yeah. Wow. Damn. See, this is why this is not rehearsed. This is a trip. And that would have been a really good... That would have been a really good pun. Like That would be. The, the, the card just vanished, and here's Vanishing. That's wild. How did you get into magic? Uh, fun, fun fact. It's something that's interesting because I... Like drums, I've obsessed over just a lot of different fads, whether it was music, baseball, magic, tacos, you name it. Like I've been, I have an, like an obsessive, uh, my mind is built that way. Yeah. When I be just, when I get focused on something that I'm interested in, I'm just like all the way about yeah. it. You know what I mean? So I saw it on TV uh, and it was the reactions and that like excitement that you got. Um, that kind of turned me on to it. And it was not, it was the art of it as I got older, but it was kind of showing my family and practicing on my mom and my sister mm. and watching their reactions and the joy that it really brings somebody. You can be in a very, very dark down place and I show you a magic trick and it's just like- It's gone. For that split second, yeah. it's gone. And that's what makes me like connect with it so much. And it's a beautiful thing and literally, I'm, and I realized the more that I play drums and the more that I meet my fans, it's like I'm doing the same thing with my drumming. Yeah. And that's the joy that I get of playing and doing this job and just having fun with it. Like like all the rest of the 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 noise is bullshit to me. Yeah. And this is this is just I'm just happy to be here for sure. Nice. Yeah. I love it. Well, on that note, let's do uh vanishing off the new record. <laughs>
Dude, there's like Woo! three false uh, endings in that song. <laughs> it's funny because <laughs> the first one at the end, I knew that was coming. Yeah. And then I legitimately forgot <laughs> about the second one. It happens. Oh my God, that's funny. Dude, there's like one fill uh, or one of the breaks before the uh, kind of like punk thrashy section with all yeah. the splashes and stuff. Yeah. There's some crazy parts in there. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's funny because there's that really thrashy part uh, and it's kind of doing the monkey beat. Yeah. Which is kind I of a, that. kind of a cheater way of doing it, but yo, that's fast. I can't do it that fast. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I could... That's, that's pretty fast. But to, to kind of get my stamina up, I recorded it that way. Yeah. And it actually fits better with the riff. Hmm. There's a lot of pull-offs and hammer-ons and stuff like that. So yeah. that part actually works. I think you're talking about this part, right? The There's that, and then there's one break. I think you go to the ride, and you're playing like lots of splash accents. Oh, yeah. That's very yeah. Portnoy. I yeah. ripped that shit off a lot. <laughs> uh. A lot of that is super random and just what I'm feeling. Yeah. Um, but that's very Portnoy. Yeah. Very Mike Portnoy. Love it. Two great questions that came in from uh, the Drumio members. Uh-huh. Uh, first one is from Brandon294. Please talk about your foot technique at higher tempos. Are you still just using same technique, like sometimes the heel-toe and then just using the whole leg for the uh, others? I do not use heel-toe when I'm up above, like, I don't know my BPMs, but what everybody usually says is 200 is fast, right? Yeah. Okay. That's fast. So when I'm above <laughs> 200... <laughs> Whenever I get into the fast parts, kind of like Resurrection Man, um, where it's just a really fast double bass over the snare on top, it's all my legs. It's yeah. all heels up, I'm driving. That's what I'm doing. A lot of the times the heel toe method, it's gotta be at a certain tempo for me to actually execute it. Just like single. Like, Oh, that tempo, burst. whatever yeah. tempo that I'm playing right there, that's kind of my sweet spot with making it a fluid transition from heels up and playing with my legs to jumping into heel toe and then back out. Nice. You know what I mean? So yeah. I hope that kind of answered your question, but I don't do heel toe when it's going really fast. <laughs> I just use all my legs and my strength. And again, I'm driving into the, the heel the heel of the uh, the pedal to kind of start my 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 flow, if you will. Nice. I hope that makes sense, Brandon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's great. Uh, one more from Kristen T. Uh, asking about your gloves. Gloves. That you use. So, uh, as you see, I use gloves. A lot of people have their opinion on gloves, but some of my favorite drummers played with gloves. Obviously, Vinnie Paul was like a a legend, and I love that he played with gloves. Um, a lot of drummers today use them. I use them. Dirk from Megadeth uses them. Mario yeah. from Gojira uses them. And it's something that helped me not lose sticks rather than protect my hands. It is really a, a, a type of glove that helps me grip the sticks. And I'm not sure if you can get in here, Jesus, but you can see me and my tech came up with the concept that he used to do with Vinnie Paul, actually. Mm -hmm where we score the stick. Can you see that, Jesus? Don't lie, Jesus. <laughs> All right. You can see that there's scoring in it, but it's a combination of wax. I use a surfboard wax hmm. that the surfers use to get grip when it's wet. Yeah. Because I sweat a lot, I wet my hair a lot, I like to look like a WWE superstar <laughs> on stage. So between me wetting my hair and sweating a lot, I don't want to lose sticks, and I still drop sticks all the time. I did during this session. Yeah. Who cares? But it's all part of it. It's all part of it. And but what it does is it helps. But I can't really grip the stick with the scores if I don't have gloves yeah, on. Cut your hands. Um, I still seem to get blisters underneath the gloves, but that's just from playing hard and passionately. I always encourage you to play hard and yeah. play. Just play with your heart. 
and that's what I do. So nice, and that's where we end up. But we're <laughs> we're getting there. We've made it this far. Uh huh. <laughs> Love it, uh, dude. We're getting close to the end. <laughs> that's sad. Yeah, it's almost been an hour. See, this Woo! wasn't so bad. No, it wasn't so we bad. I was freaking out. I was freaking drums. out the whole time. <laughs> I was freaking out the whole time. <laughs> it's but, good. It's all good stuff. No, man, but um, I appreciate being here. Before we wrap up, uh, just one more question. So what would you say is, you obviously came into a band that had a lot of history, lots of records out. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say was the hardest part about joining Lamb of God, a band that has lots of history? Um, you're coming in, was it something technical, like learning the parts? Was it um, dealing with fans who have opinions of the old band configuration? Like, yeah. what would you say? Uh, it's a combination of both. I was so confident with my playing, and not in an egotistical way. I was just very confident with where I was on my skill level. I had been touring for a long time in the trenches, man. Like yeah. From local bands to selling merchandise for bands, to being a driver, to, to just being the guy that let me help kind of thing, yeah. to playing in bands and sleeping on floors and doing all that good stuff. Um, but it wasn't really that. It was wasn't the playing. I was confident enough with my playing. Uh, it was the a challenge with the fans. It's mm. a, it's a big deal, and that goes for anybody. You know, your your Jason Newsteads, your Robert Trujillo. It's crazy how they went back to back to kind to convince yeah. fans. And you don't think about that until it's a reality, and you're getting blown up on on yeah, on you're, you're social media, it. and you're experiencing it. And that those are probably the most challenging parts. Mm. But with a band and a brotherhood that I have, they've walked me, literally, pun intended, walked me through hell yeah. and helped see me on the other side. So I don't have to really pay attention to that stuff yeah. anymore. And I don't. Uh, I'm here to inspire. That is my only goal in yeah. this world is to show you where I came from, my vulnerabilities, my weaknesses, and show you how I grow from that and do what I can to be in this position. And yeah. uh, thankfully, I'm in a better place than, than I used to before. It was, a lot, it was hard to get through that stuff, man. Mm -hmm. But thankfully, it's, uh, it's, soon, it's a lot easier to avoid it. Yeah. I just don't go on. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's fun. Awesome, man. Yeah. Great advice. Um, before we wrap up, uh, once again, one reminder of all the stuff we're giving away. Symbols, <laughs> records, jokers. Uh, yeah, lots of stuff. So... There's going to be links down in the description once this is posted uh, on YouTube. So just click that and there's going to be a bunch of stuff. Uh, and then for the members, we'll have something special uh, once this is posted in the Drumio members area. So there'll be a, uh, a special link for you once this is posted there. We're going to wrap up with one more song. There's tons of other stuff coming from Art. We filmed a bunch of song breakdowns of some classic Lamb of God songs. We made Art play some crazy stuff that you probably wouldn't uh, imagine him ever playing. <laughs> So yeah. that's going to be good. Yeah. I forgot we're playing another song. What song are we playing? Oh, we're going to do a September song. Oh, man. To wrap up. Holy this moly. This is what you, uh, you uh, right. suggested. So, <laughs> damn. All right. So this song uh, is like the second time I've ever played it, and I'm nice. so pumped to play it. This is one of my favorite songs by the band. It starts off with a groove that you would not hear a traditional Lamb of God song have. Yeah. And it's my... It's a, it's a, it was inspired by one of my favorite drummers, David Garibaldi from Tower of Power. Oh, nice. It's a very, it's a different type of uh, feel, but it, it has the same sticking concepts. Yeah. Uh, I hope that makes sense. I'm sure when you hear it, you will understand. But, uh, oh my God, I'm pumped. I totally forgot about this song. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you get ready, but. Yeah. Um, and all the songs that Art's played in this lesson, they're over on Drumio Transcribed with the drumless tracks. Drumio.com forward slash trial. And you can check all that stuff out with a bunch of other Lamb of God tracks. Art, thanks so much for hanging out, man. Oh, thank you been... guys for having me. This was literally the coolest experience all week. I can't wait for you to see everything that we filmed. It's going to be good. And uh, this has been fun. Uh, if I mess this song up, I'm going to start over, and I'm going to do it again, because that's how you it. do it. <laughs> love it. Thanks, uh, everyone, for hanging out with us, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.